Now here's something about Alaskan summers I can take advantage of. Put on your shades, because in this video, we're staring at the sun. Safely, and on a budget. Welcome to Alaskan Astro. Before we get going, let's talk about some safety. According to this sticker and common sense, you should never point a telescope at the sun or even look directly at it with your eyes. However, I have this solar film that's specifically designed for safe observing of the sun attached to this very fancy device that I've cooked up. Uh, so this fits over the front of the scope and allows us to safely view the sun. Some other solar safety basics, always make sure that your scope is pointed safely away from the sun before taking off. Any lens covers, and if you have any finder scopes, make sure that those stay covered the whole time unless you have an extra filter for those. Also, before you use any kind of film or filter, always inspect it and make sure that there are no little nicks or pinpricks in it. Now there's a number of special devices you can use to find the sun. All I'm doing though is just rotating this back and forth until this shadow down here pretty much disappears or gets as small as it can. And then my eyepiece is wide enough that I can kind of hunt up and down until I find it. This little sheet of solar film from Thousand Oaks Optical sold by Agena Astro Products only cost me like 25 bucks. And it is just a white light filter, so the only surface details you're going to see are sunspots. That being said, how does this goofy setup perform? Well. I was actually shocked at how cool the views are looking through here. Uh, and I'll try and even show you what I was able to get hooking up my DSLR camera to here. But yeah, I was blown away by what I could see for such a cheap and simple setup. Let me show you. How neat is that? And conveniently, there's even a couple sunspots to take a look at right now. Now, the views through this are nothing compared to what you'd see with a quark or a dedicated solar scope, but for $25, this is such a cool way to dip your toes into solar astronomy. I'm pretty sure I can say safely that I am hooked on this. I'm gonna interrupt myself to talk a little bit more about how you can use this solar film. Also, our annual food order arrived on the barge, so that's why it looks like I'm living in Costco right now. Anyway, this solar film is really easy to use. The instructions that it came with actually says you can literally just wrap it over the front of your scope and secure it with some rubber bands. I made this little cardboard and duct tape setup and it worked all right, but it was getting in the way and it's obviously not going to last very long. So I had the idea of something that I could whip up in the 3D modeling program and use on my 3D printer. So I'll show you how that ends up working. In the words of Dunder Mifflin Regional Manager Michael Scott, I am going to make this way harder than it has to be. Now that we're done with our two straight weeks of rain, I'm trying to take this white light solar astrophotography to the limit I can with my gear. So I've actually got a little planetary camera into a Barlow, my imaging newt and the same little foil setup and it's actually working really well. Unfortunately, the sunspots are kind of boring today, but I'll show you what I got anyway. This camera I'm using, the QHY 462C, is not normally something that would be good for solar because it's a color camera, but because I'm using this white light filter, it's actually working just fine for me. We're just coming out of the minimum of the sun's 11 year activity cycle. So things are gonna be getting more exciting in the next few years, but today the little tiny sunspots that are there are pretty entertaining to take a look at. Well, I've definitely hit the limit of what I can do between these two different setups. So unless I get another sheet of solar film from Agena, there's not a whole lot more I can do here, unless I somehow get my hands on a quark or a dedicated solar scope. But this sure has been a really interesting little thing to dip my toes into. One of the things that I've really enjoyed about doing solar is how dynamic the sun is. It's really cool how every time I go out and look at it, there's something different about it. Either the sunspots have moved or changed, or there's something even new to see. 
So finally, I wanna talk a little bit about processing. I know next to nothing about solar or lunar or planetary processing, but this is kind of what I've figured out and been guided along by others. So I'm taking these video files and stacking them in AutoStacker, which sort of rates and chooses which frames are the sharpest and the best and weights those more heavily and uses them. And then it outputs an image that looks something like this. And then we just use different tools to sharpen the image and bring out those details. And then I'm just using a little bit of curves to play around with the color and contrast. And it's just amazing that it can get this from a white light filter and get all this detail. So let me show you a couple of the highlights of what I've gotten. If you're looking for a fun, cheap, simple way to expand in your astronomy hobby, maybe give solar a try. I sure enjoyed it. Anyway, just remember to wear a coat because, I don't know, sunburn. <laughs> <laughs>